Uh, what are we, 7.52. Let's welcome Graham Hunter to the show after a fairly dramatic day in the history of uh, Barcelona Football Club. As Phil was talking about there, Bartomeu was arrested. Graham, I guess it's not a shock that Bartomeu was arrested, but it's still ultimately shocking that football authorities uh, can be arrested for what they do and have, have done something that has merited us reaching this point, if, if that makes sense. I've, I've, I've ballsed up the phraseology there, but it is pretty shocking. Yeah, good morning. Uh, I know that uh, after such a long friendship, you're effectively checking that I'm not in the jail. I'm not. We're casting from three bumper Graham Casa. Um, shocking. You said a couple of things there that surprised me, um, that it wasn't too much of a surprise that Bartomeu was in the jail. Um, there was a good deal of surprise yesterday, even though this is a year-long police and judicial investigation. By the way, Ger, oh, and long live radio journalism. Uh, this started almost exactly a year ago when the local radio station, Ser reported that um, a group of senior directors and one uh, non-director, but uh, nonetheless a, a senior staff member at Barcelona, had engaged in using, paying, secretly paying, breaking up the, the, the huge payments, a million euros, into smaller payments so that it could slip through the, the governance system at the club. So in other words, there's a real implication that this is not FC Barcelona per se, but a group within the club. Um, paid uh, 13 Ventures, a, a firm, to, to, to besmirch various figures, including um, potential presidential, presidential candidates, Leo Messi and Gerard Piquet, plus Xavi. Um, so when that initially, you don't want me to go through the whole thing about denial and then further proof and then um, a compliance officer and then Price Waterhouse investigating and then resignations on mass of people who protested against the the, the board with it from within their own um, cadre, and then the resignation of the board. All of that has been going on for almost exactly a year, and it's it's been evident that there's been some form of wrongdoing. That much is proven. But that yesterday people started to turn up at Camp Now offices, chair, and if they turned up by about you know uh, post breakfast. They weren't allowed in. The place was sealed off, and a subsequent the, the, the investigating police body here is called the Mossos de Squadra. That's their economic division. They went into a number of private residences plus offices at Football Club Barcelona. They went in there because they hadn't been getting the documents that they required. Anyway, long and short is that during that morning, it, it was pretty startling to know that four men had been taken into custody in an area of the city called Las Cortes, where the camp now is housed. And two of them were left in, in the, um, the cells, let's call it, rather than prison, the cells of the police station overnight. And, and as we speak, we're about five minutes away right now from two of those men declaring, and theoretically declaring in front of a judge in the city centre of Boston, where they've been taken from the Las Cortes police station to, to declare. Um, innocent to proven guilty is a concept that functions here, just as it does in your country. Um, so I know that the news has been rumbling for day. I, I, I heard you talking um, it through there, and I guess that you reported some of it yesterday. But let me say that yesterday, when there were these arrests, um, it, it, was, it was pretty surprising. And if the allegations of um, breaking down large sums of money so that they could pass through um, from these group of men, exclusively men that are accused, um, to the company that was allegedly paid to, to besmirch these people, but more um, figures than, I, than I've mentioned, um, if that if that's true, if if they're if they're convicted of this um, attempt to create a climate favourable to the now departed president, you know there's there's jail terms hanging over it if proven, and I think you tailed off your question by saying it's a bit shocking that that football club should resort to this. It's, it's utterly imbecilic, as well as disgraceful. The idea, so many years after. 
there were different elements to it. So many, I, so many years after Watergate, the idea that you can do something to try and tamper with the climate in order to <clears throat> push favoritism your way and do so via a company, sneak payments out in order to create feeling that might help the outgoing board nominate a successor and have a sense of continuity for the type of people that are in charge of Coca Cola Barcelona. The people taken into court this morning are only accused of this. They're not guilty of this yet, uh, proven guilty of this yet. But that concept seems to me, seem, I mean the word that I used, it seems imbecilic. The timeline of Barca Gate, Graham, and the fallout is, is interesting because I didn't realise, but it's like six months in between Bartomeu's resignation and the first reporting of Barca Gate. When you see what happened yesterday, how did it take so long? Well, there's been collateral damage. You're right about that timeline on, but wow, this is what makes it still more pathetic because initially, of course, when the radio station, station broke, it was an absolutely brilliant honey trap, long live radio journalism. Um, there was an accusation on a programme, Bartomeu, then the president, came out and roundly denied it, um, threatened legal action. Of course, what if they had the follow-up story and they released very damning evidence. There was then um, a, a, a complete division within the board, which begins to account for the announcement of what happened um, in in midwinter last year through to late autumn when Bartomeu this board vote. And what happened was that the compliance officer, um, a woman, um, took all the evidence presented to the board or tried to present to the board. Bartomeu refused to ha have it presented. She presented it to a subcommittee and said, this is what the evidence says has been going on. She was fired. There was then an external audit which said, oh, well, you know, they, they've maybe been a little bit um, clumsy about some of the accounting practices. That, that external audit looks pretty flawed, to, to use careful terminology in retrospect. And it was only when, it, many times over the years, you've talked to me about Football Club Barcelona, once it became in vogue, people have asked about membership ownership. And that has begun in recent years to look a little, a little bit of a um, white elephant, something that is is known and is talked about but was a little bit powerless well what happened was um one particular member who wanted to stand for president began last autumn to collect signatures for a vote of the confidence and this process was fought against by the outgoing board and there were all kind of obstacles put in the way but the, the people spoke and and the board only left they didn't leave out of oh, you know, it's, it's clear we've been found out or we need to leave for the good name of the club. They left because the, the, the baying mob with pitchforks and torches were queuing outside, you know, the the bad guy's mansion. And, and it was people power that forced them out, not not dignity, not not sort of um, a, a, a willingness to accept that, that they'd, they'd done something wrong. And during that time, I want to make this point, this, this is important for people listening. Because we've, we've talked about um, you know unproven news story yet and wrongdoing by big guys. That's the stuff of every day at the moment, I, I think, in society. But remember that in, I think it was October, Gerard Piquet pointed out that one of the accused, who was the chief of staff for Bartomeu, um, Jaume Masferrer, had been suspended and, and suspended without pay in theory. This was announced midway through last year's Barca game process, suspended, but then it, it transpired that he's still on full pay, and he's brought back into the staff. And Gerard Piquet spoke out and said that it, to be in this club, playing for this club, is deeply wounding to know that, that the guy who's alleged to have been using social media to, to crap on us and other players, legends like Javi, it is not only still at the club, but has been reinstated. And remember, in, remember this famous Puro fact with Leo Messi and Messi's press conference said, I've been lied to time and time again by Bartomeu. Well, Pique first lanced that boil and said, when the allegations of the club using social media, paying a firm to, to, to consistently use a broad range of social media to damage us, to, to put us in a bad light, to undermine our credibility. I went to the president, Pique said, 
went to Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus said, oh, I knew nothing about this. Pick said, I believed him. Now, I feel like a fool. We were lied to. Messi's point about Bartimaeus lied to me throughout the year. They're only in front of the judge at the moment, innocent to proven guilty. But the, the, the burden of um, evidence against them is growing that there was outright malfeasance against their, their own players. The whole concept of what they're accused of doing is brutally wrong. But to do it against your own footballers, as you're expecting them to go out and one expecting them to go out and win trophies, and two, you're going to those players and asking them to take significant pay, pay cuts because of the emergence of the COVID crisis. It's, if there's been, if once, if proven, then I don't believe there's been a bigger scandal in the history of the club. What would the outcome be if this is proven? If it's proven against the, the people who are the four men who are accused of it, and there there would be that there would there might if proven there might be further collateral damage. Those who are accused and who are standing in front of the judge right now, Ariana Hill, mm -hmm. there is the threat of prison sentences. This is a strange country for carrying out the full. Uh, weight of the law, um, influence counts, and it's yet to be proven as much for the benefit of um, the integrity of the law and for the benefit of the law, it has yet to be proven. If proven, the, penal the penalty for the offences that they are accused of does carry um, jail terms of from months to I think a maximum of four years. From the club's perspective, the, the damage to their reputation, is that the type of thing that actually a new administration comes in and very quickly is able to repair? The, am, I, am I right in saying there's presidential elections this weekend? Could a new president yeah. make peace with Messi and with PK and with Xavi and say, we want you all to help us rebuild the reputation of this club in, and restore to the owners, the fans, the, the sense of we are a mess KO club as opposed to just a mess. <laughs> how, how long ago um, that phrase seemed to be not only in vogue, but, but viable. Um, the, the, the answer is, Ter, if I'm honest with you, I, I, I don't fully know. Um, t today will be a day of celebration. Yesterday and today will be a day of celebration in the households of many current players of the club and some ex-players. No question about that. Um, Setting things right, there are three candidates, uh, one of whom was pretty prominent um, on Bartomeu's board. So in the case that Tony Fraser wins, no. And I'm not a Barca fan, nor a Barca sociopath. Having seen him in action over the last, I don't know how many years, it would be devastating if that man uh, wins. Um, it, it, it's 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 pretty embarrassing from my point of view that he's even got this far in the hustings. The other two candidates, Joanne Laporta, um, carries his own issues into this, but he has been a steadfast critic of and opponent of Joseph Maria Bartomeu, and therefore the answer to your question there is maybe. Victor Font, the guy who um, originally was part of the reason that the the, the now departed board of football club Barcelona began to. How do I phrase this? Allegedly began to think that they needed to create a climate of of fear and dislike. Victor Font was the original reason. It was over a year ago. One, it was clear he was going to stand for the elections, which were always due um, at this in this calendar year. Had to be held before this summer. Um, the idea that Victor Font had such a candidacy, had such um, planning, had such appeal, uh, it took root a year ago, and it was about Victor Font that there was there's clearly fear and loathing within the board of Barcelona during 2020. He is still standing, but Joan Laporta looks to have overtaken him comprehensively, stripped him of some of his pulses and ideas. Were, were Font to win the presidency? Yes, what you've proposed there is feasible, that there could be a new beginning and a, and a sense of... I, stand, I have always stood for something different. I've never been on this board. With Laporta, he's such a clever, charming, uh, politically shrewd man. The answer to your question is maybe. But this, what's going on now, will 
undoubtedly affect people's minds, socios' minds, for the good to the hustings and vote on Sunday, March the 7th, there will be a new president. You said, can they change the image? Can they heal the, the damage with the players? It, honestly, as much as I'm used to saying bold things on off the ball, I'd ask you, let me use the phrase, let's wait and see, because this is a pernicious, still um, unraveling, acidically damaging subject. And let me put it like this, were I Messi or PK, I would be immensely slow to trust again uh, the people who, who run the club, whether they're coming in uh, fresh from elections on Sunday or not. And I think that would go for a number of the players who are not new to the club over the last 12 months. In that climate then, if you were in Messi's camp, would you be recommending to get the hell out of here, that nobody's going to hold it against you given the absolute shit show that's happening? Yeah, well, get your world's tiniest violin out because, you know, effectively underneath all this, I suppose I'm I'm saying you should probably feel a little bit more empathy for, for nearly billionaire Leo Messi because it's not that simple. Um, if you're advising Leo Messi, number one, you're probably wasting your time because he's a very stubborn um, guy who, when he comes to the decision, largely it will be his own and whatever that decision is, he'll stick to it stubbornly. But the ideas of um, changing country, changing language, changing culture, moving a family in the pandemic, uprooting himself from both the club and the city that he's known all his adult life, life, they will remain dominant themes over and above what he feels about the fact that the man who he claimed lied to him the man who said he could go for free, the man who then reneged on that promise and did, did a runner. How, how well does Mar Maria Bartomeu sounds when you explain all that, doesn't he? What, what, a, what a lovely character. Um, the, the very fact that there are now judicial accusations and police, two separate things, accusations against that man, m might make you think, um, okay, once he's cleared up, I can say, or it might make you think, I'm not trusting again, and I'm going, okay, I take your point, but there are so many other big ticket issues that Leo Messi has to come to terms with um, that I'm not sure this will be the, the deciding factor whether he moves to Manchester City, um, Paris Saint-Germain. I, I still think Inter, Inter Miami is down the line, not this summer, or stays at Football Club Barcelona. And personally, opinion based only, I think the chances of him staying when you watch him recently and w w what pleasure he's finding in his football. I think the chances of him opting to stay, wanting to stay, are, are rising a little bit. Whether the whether the club has the money to persuade him to stay, to pay him to stay, that's a question for another day. Graham, good stuff. Thanks a million.